Hey everybody, it's Jane. I have some Christmas stickers and tags that I want to share with you today. I am always looking to make easy tags that don't make me cringe when people open their gifts and throw them in the trash. And I think I came up with a really good idea. I started out with this holiday steel stamp set from Stamping Village. 12 different stamp companies got together and created these different um, seals or stamps. And they're all the same size. They cut out with dies or punches. And you can see we have Concord and Ninth, Hero Arts, Gina K, Waffle Flower, Pink Fresh, Lawn Fawn, that's her famous deer, Altenew, Art Impressions, Dare to be Artsy, who are new to me this year, Studio Katia, Pink and Main, and Avery L. I'd seen a video of Jennifer McGuire who turned these into stickers or seals for the back of envelopes and I decided to expound on that and I made all of these tags for my Christmas gifts. I stamped them randomly on pieces of 110 pound Nina cardstock or heavy duty colored cardstock. Some of them I colored in, some of them as you can see I used heat embossing. I used um, Copic markers. I put to and from behind all of them and colored in the little heart. You can see the Copic markers all over my hand. I used string from my stash and most of it's lawn fawn twine. And then I went ahead and made a bunch of stickers or seals for the back of envelopes. And these are just Avery L labels. I will link them in my description below. And if they're not on my description on YouTube, please head over to my blog because I have them all, everything listed there. And these are just some of what I've made. I since stamped about six or eight more sets of these. I'm going to color them. I'm going to give them away as gifts and put them in little glassine bags for some Christmas presents. Some of them I said are colored with Copics, which is pretty easy. And some of them I did with heat embossing. I want to show you that when you do color the tags with Copic markers that the Copics do show through on the other side. That didn't bother me any, but if it bothers you, you can cut another one and then glue back to back and then you can hide that. But I didn't really care. It is a tag after all that will get thrown into the trash. So here are the labels that I started with. They're the, as I said, the Avery L. And they are the number 8165, and they're just a typical um, label, but as you can see, they're true block, so they're pretty thick. They do hide everything that is underneath. So I want to start with that, and they are relatively easy to color. So I stamped them, spaced them apart so that I could cut them apart with my dies, so I had room for that, and I spaced them all apart and did it that way. And you can see I started coloring this one. And there's 12, there's 12 to 14 I found I can fit on a sheet. This is the same stamp, only I used the Nina 110 pound cardstock for this. You can see it's just a little bit darker. And then these are the ones that I colored with the colored. And what I'm showing you here is that there's three different styles. I cut them out with three different dies. Um, one of them is just a plain circle like this. The Hero Arts Nested Circle is what I used, and you can use a punch as well. Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Scallop, and that stitch scallop is very important. And then the Lawn Fawn Stitch Circle Small. It comes small and large. I use the circle from the small set. I liked having just the three different options. Again, here they are with the heat embossing. And heat embossing, you just need to get your gun really good and hot and take it to the paper and kind of put it on and take it off so that you don't wreck the label itself. But they did heat emboss very, very nicely. I mean, I was really impressed with that. This is one of my favorites. I gave these little penguins different color sweaters. I didn't do any shading or anything like that. It's just straight Copic to paper. On the labels, you just really use the tip so you avoid a lot of bleed. I use Versamark ink, and these are the three embossing powders that I use, Gilded, Sterling, and Alabaster. They're my favorites. And here's just a bunch of different ones that I stamped on paper. 
And what I did was when I did the labels, I used the mouse pad from my Misty and I put it my label on top and I'm conditioning my stamp since I've never used this before. I'm trying to rub it to get it a little um, less shiny so it, it takes the ink better. And I used Gina K Designs Black Amalgam because you can use that with Copics. And I've got my label sheet on top of my mouse pad. I felt that it needed just a little bit of oomph to get a really good um, stamp on the uh, on the label sheet. Otherwise, it just wasn't stamping it correctly. And I'm just eyeballing it, trying to figure out where the end of my mouse pad is, putting them on acrylic blocks. There's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. And then a few areas where I messed up, I used the multi-liner. There's a, zero, a 0 0.03 and a 0 0.05. You can use either one. And I just color them in by hand if they're not too not stamped, if lack of a better word. And once you color them in and punch them out, nobody will ever even know that you did it yourself. I like to color in um, uh, assembly line order. So I'm gonna color all the green first. And as I said, I'm using just the tip of my marker. Um, I don't hardly any pressure because it just kind of uh, bleeds or just kind of move, <clears throat> excuse me, moves onto this label sheet. And I'm just kind of giving it a little go there, coloring the browns in. And typically, if I wasn't doing a video, I'd color all the greens, all the reds, all the browns. And I did lie, tied a little bit. I did do a little bit of shading on the bird. But later on, I didn't do any shading at all, and you wouldn't even know the difference. And just since I decided to make this a robin, um, I'm coloring in his belly with the same red that I used in the berries. And the berries, I just did a little tap, tap, tap. So I like to cut them apart and then put my dies on top, run it through my Gemini Junior, which I absolutely love. And this is how I do my Gemini Junior because I don't, my, I don't wanna mess up how I laid it all out. So I take my, the top plate of my Gemini Junior and I put my everything laid on top. And then I take all my bottom magnetic plates and everything and put them on top. And then I flip it around and run it through. Because in the Gemini Junior, the cutting part of the die has to be facing up. And that is how I can do it so I can see it. And you can see the stitching lines around there and how really great these cut out on the label paper. And I just love the way you can line them up. And what cute little stickers for the back of envelopes or for anything for that matter. Um, I'm thinking you could take six or eight of these or nine of these and pop them up with foam tape and put them on a cart. If you want to use the, you know, Nina 110 pound or colored card stock, you can make a card out of them. And I think that would be fun as well. I didn't do it because I didn't think about it until just now. <laughs> I um, heat embossed Brutus Monroe Alabaster on this um, red card stock, which I will link below. And again, I like to cut them out be before so that when it goes through the die cut machine, I'm not messing up the ones that are, um, I'm not running through. I like to just manage what I'm running through. And I'll put my three on there and then I'll cut off the fourth one to get it out of the way. And I pick the die depending on how much space I have around it to lay it out. So the one on the bottom left, I didn't have a whole lot of space around it. So that's why I chose the plain um, die cut for that particular circle. Again, putting my top plate down, putting this on top, putting all my bottom on top of that and flipping it over and running it through my Gemini Junior and that way it doesn't get messed up. I have a, um, you can do quarter inch, eighth inch hole punches. I think this is an eighth of an inch. I'm cutting my string to 10 inches. Uh, I like to measure my string and then just cut multiples of them or my you know, ribbon or whatever it is. There's different ways to do this. I'm gonna show you a few. I'm gonna, you can put it through the hole. This is probably the simplest way. And just tie a little knot at the top. And then you can run that through on your ribbon or whatever it is on your package. And you have a little loop. 
and I do that a lot, but the, there's another way that I prefer to do it. That way the, it is, it, I put the two ends together and then I'm going to put them both ends through the whole of my tag and you can go through the front or the back. This is an example of through the front. And then I'm going to take the loop and wrap it around there and pull it. And that's then, then you can tie it around your ribbon. Sorry, it's off camera. And I'll show that again in just a second. So I heat emboss this with red heat embossing, red embossing powder, and I also stamped it in red. And I did not necessarily like the stamping, but I did like the red embossing powder on the labels. I have one and three quarter inch punches here. I use the solid punch. You can see it fits perfectly. The scallop does not fit. It needs to be a two inch punch if you want to punch it with scallop. And I did not have one. I had a one and three quarter. And you can see this is clearly the fastest way to cut and color or emboss your stickers or your labels. Um, you can, you know, get those done really quickly. This is how I do one that's too small, that it holds, kind of line it up with my finger in the hole, give it a punch, and off it goes. And there you go. I'm using the punch. And I have the heat white heat embossed on the red cardstock. So again, I'm cutting, punching some holes in here. You kind of line up the center and where you want your center to be. And I get some, I do assembly line. I cut them all. And then I go back and either put the two from on the back, which I'll show you in just a second, or I put the ribbon on all. It just really depends on what I'm doing. This is Lawn Fawn Twine. It is linked in the description below. I also have some off-ray ribbon that I think I got at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. It comes, it's, it's eighth of an inch and it comes in a bunch of different colors. I cut it to 10 to 12 inches long. And what I like to do is I like to cut one and then rather than lining up against my, my glass media mat, which I adore my glass media mat, I just kind of fold it back on each other. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. And I just cut the end off. And that way I don't have to keep measuring, measuring, measuring. It's already measured once and it doesn't really matter if it's exact or not. So here's another example of me putting the ribbon through the front. And that's what the knot looks like. But I personally like the ribbon through the back. So I just like the way that knot looks better. So here's an example of... And of course I use white ribbon. It's hard to see and I apologize for that. But maybe you can see. See I have like more like of a tie on the right hand side. Let's see. It's hard to see. That's more of a loop and the other one's more of a tie. Just give them a try at home and see which ones you like better. I, again, I like back to front. And then here's the other one that I did originally. Which works good too. It's not just not my favorite. But that's me. Everybody has different ways of doing things. So with the twine, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take my back to front, pull it through, and you can see how it looks like a, a tie. And there's a whole bunch of tags that I have here. And then I decided to take the Lawn Fawn Tiny Tag Sayings. There's a really cute little um, die cut that goes with this as well. And I use the two from with the heart. Put that on my acrylic block using the same Gina K amal Black Amalgam ink. And I'm just going to stamp two from on the back of all of my labels. And then I'm testing it to make sure it stamps okay before I go take it to my label that's already finished. I don't want to mess one up. I put the hole on the top so I know which, and I do the top. And I do the punch the holes before I do the two from. Otherwise, I will not know where the top is. Ask me how I know that. And then I'll color in that little heart with either red Copic marker on the white or silver or white on the red, just depending on what kind of heat embossing I did on the other side. And I just think that adds such a cute little touch. And yes, it took some time to make these labels, but I won't cringe as much as I do when I make shaker tag labels and people throw them in the trash. <laughs> I'm like, wait, cut that off. Don't throw it away. We'll use it next year. And they're like, well, okay, mom. So here's a whole bunch of stuff that I stamped out, getting ready to color. 
they're on either Nina 110 pound or they're on label paper. It just really depended. And off camera, I will cut and color all of those out. And here's some that I've colored. I just love them. And I'm just, every once in a while, I fall in love with something that I can make multiples of. And this is one of my multiples. So here's how I stamp it for um, embossing. Because it's on red paper, I can actually see, you see the mark there? Versamark ink is almost like a watermark ink. So I can actually see it and I'm stamping on that mouse pad just to give it a little bit extra. I'm going to use my sterling embossing powder and I am going to just pour that on the whole sheet over my coffee filter. And if there's any extra that's off, I use my embossing buddy bag first. I didn't show you that. And then if there's any leftover, I'll take a paintbrush, a dry paintbrush, and I'll brush it off with the paintbrush and then I'll emboss it. Again, I like to make sure my Wagner heat gun is good and hot. I love this Wagner heat gun. And you can see all that extra silvery embossing on the cardstock. And it did not interfere with what I was doing. It did not emboss. It was more like just leftover glitter, if you want to call it that. And you can see it's melting and how beautiful it came out. Here's another. These are the label sheets. Same thing. Take it to your paper, but make sure it's good and hot, and then just put it on. Make sure it's melting really, really quickly. You do not want to hold your heat gun there very long. And you can see I'm just kind of running it around. You can see it melting just a little bit there. You don't keep your heat gun there very long. And then I'm going to cut these out with either the punch or the die cut. So here's another look of all the labels that I made and all the tags that I made. I'm thinking it took five hours to make all of these from stamping to coloring to punching, die cutting, adding the string, and add the two from. And I really hope you enjoy it. And I highly recommend you give this a try. It is probably one of the funnest, <laughs> most fun projects I have done in a very long time, and as I said, I do like to do multiples 